I'm Mr. Beat, a dude who often makes videos about American presidents on the internet. But what does the President of the United States even do? What would you say you do here? Well, look, I already told you. I deal with the customers so the engineers don't have to. I have people skills. I am good at dealing with people. Slacker. There are a lot of misconceptions about what the president's job actually is. A lot of people mistakenly think they control the economy. They don't. A lot of people mistakenly think they can declare war. They can't. Even more people think they control how much money the federal government spends. Well, they definitely have a big influence over government spending, but ultimately Congress has the most control over spending. It's the power of the purse, baby. The United States Constitution spells out exactly what the president can do. There's actually not much there. Article 1, Section 7 says a president can sign a bill or want to be law if they approve of it or veto a bill if, you know, they don't like it. That said, Congress can override that veto with a two-thirds majority vote in both houses. Article 2 of the Constitution spells out the rest. It says the president is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces and all state militias that are called into service. It says the president can grant powers to officers. It says the president can appoint people to be in charge of executive departments, ambassadors, Supreme Court justices, and other top dogs pending senate approval it says the president can recommend that congress do stuff and it says the president has to inform congress of the state of the union from time to time it says the president can call either or both houses of congress into special sessions it says the president can make treaties again pending senate approval it says the president, in most cases, can pardon people convicted of federal crimes and prevent their punishments. It says the president can host foreign guests. And last but definitely not least, it says the president must do what they can to make sure laws passed by Congress are enforced. But that's basically it as far as what the Constitution explicitly says. The president also has what we call, quote, inherent powers, meaning they are powers not explicitly stated in the Constitution, but still viewed as necessary in order to carry out those explicitly stated powers. Know what I mean? Arguably the most visible form of inherent presidential powers come in the form of executive orders, or presidential orders meant to carry out policies described in laws. There's actually an even easier way to get things done around here. It's called an executive order. I'm an executive order and I pretty much just happened. <laughs> and that's it. Due to all of these inherent powers, we're going to have to break down presidential powers quite a bit more. But before Mr. B gets into it, I have to tell you about something. No, they don't want to hear about your rash. No, ugh, no. Why would I tell them about my rash? Well, you wouldn't shut up about it earlier, and frankly, it gave me nightmares. It was very disturbing. Oh, well, I'm sorry I gave you nightmares, but no. I'm gonna tell them about a solution to spam phone calls. Fine, do your thing. Let's get this over with. <laughs> Thanks. Are you tired of constantly getting spam phone calls to a point where you don't even answer your phone anymore? Data brokers are making lots of money selling your information to robocallers, spammers, and others who want to learn more about you. You know, like where you live. Well, this video is sponsored in part by Aura, which can identify data brokers exposing your information and submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Brokers legally have to remove your info if you ask them to, but they make it super hard to do. Let Aura handle it for you. Aura also does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats you can't see. It's easy to set up. You get parental controls, antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more all in one app. 
all at one affordable price. So let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. Look, you can either let people continue to exploit and profit off of your private information, or you can go to HTTP... Aura.com slash MrBeat to start your two-week free trial. So go to that link or the, the links in the description actually. You just click on the link in the description, that'd be easier. Thanks to Aura for sponsoring this video. I see what you did there, you sneaky baboon. Always trying to sell them stuff. Get out of here. Go on. Go back to your cage. I mean, go back to your home. <laughs> I wouldn't put my clone in a cage. <laughs> anyway, so what is the president's job? Well, actually, they have five jobs, which is also the number of fingers I have on my right hand. Chief Executive. The president enforces the law. They carry out the laws that Congress has passed. Think of them like the police. No, not the band, the police like the law enforcement police. If there's a huge emergency, like a riot or natural disaster, the president can do quite a bit to make sure order is restored. And this includes martial law, or placing an area under the control of a military. Not only does the president enforce laws, but they also enforce federal court decisions and treaties. It's a pretty big task, so literally millions of people help the president out with the whole enforcement thing. In fact, Congress has created entire departments dedicated to certain areas of enforcement. For example, there's the Department of the Interior, which is responsible for maintaining and conserving most federal land and natural resources. The head of these departments make up what's known as the Cabinet, who act as advisors to the President. And the President is also their boss. They hire them, they can fire them, as I mentioned earlier, the president also acts as chief executive by granting pardons and reducing punishments. So, if you're thinking about committing a bunch of federal crimes, all you gotta do is become BFFs with the president. It's that easy. For legal reasons, that was a joke. Chief Legislature. The president can not only sign bills into law and veto bills they don't like, but they can also recommend bills they like to Congress. And since the president is a pretty influential person, often Congress listens. Okay, well, sometimes they do. Every year, the president also submits a budget to Congress, and Congress is always like, "Oh, that's so cute. Well, we're gonna spend how we're gonna spend anyway, but thanks for playing. And they pass their own budget. As I mentioned earlier, the president can also call special sessions of Congress and promote their legislative priorities in their State of the Union address. This all said, when the president doesn't have a majority of people who agree with them on major issues in Congress, their role as chief legislator legislator uh, is bigly diminished. For the next three jobs, you'll hopefully see that the president has a huge role shaping foreign policy or how the country interacts with other countries. Chief Diplomat. A big part of the president's job is dealing with foreign countries. And yes, that means often meeting up with foreign leaders. A president is the top representative to the rest of the world, making friendships, keeping friendships, well, keeping dialogues open at least, even when these meetings might be awkward. If you ever wanna be president, I hope you like traveling. The current president, Joe Biden, has made trips to 23 countries throughout his presidency. The president before him, Donald Trump, made trips to 24 countries. The president before him, Barack Obama, went to 58 countries. Holy dang. 
In addition to negotiating treaties with other countries, the president makes what's known as executive agreements, which are deals between two heads of government of two or more countries that haven't been approved by any legislature or treaty. There's also tremendous weight on whether or not a president says another country's government is legitimate. Speaking of which, I'm still waiting on the president to recognize that country I started in Antarctica. Come on, recognize Matt Beatland already. Commander in chief. The president is in charge of the armed forces. Now, this doesn't mean that the president actually commands troops out in the battlefield, but the Constitution does say that they have the final say regarding the military's actions. And if the president believes there's a military threat to Americans, they can send troops to defend against that threat. But that doesn't mean the president can just send troops around the world, as if it wasn't no thing but a bunch of chicken wings. Due to the War Powers Resolution, a law Congress passed back in 1973 to make sure the president just doesn't send a bunch of troops off to fight wars indefinitely. The president can only commit troops for up to 90 days in response to a military threat. After that, Congress has to approve, man. And remember, only Congress can declare war. That said, the last time they actually formally declared war was World War II. And yet, strangely, the United States has been at war quite a bit ever since then. Hmm. Anyway, being commander-in-chief makes the president the only individual in the United States who has the authority to launch nuclear weapons. Chief of State. In this role, the president is the symbol that represents the entire country. That's uh, one person representing 335 million people. So, uh, no pressure, right? Often the rest of the world sees the United States as they see the president. Because of this, many see the president as the spokesperson for the entire country. If you're wondering why so many people seem to be overly critical about how the president talks, that's often why. As chief of state, the president does ceremonial stuff like honoring heroes, dedicating new parks and museums, saving the life of a turkey every Thanksgiving, and lighting this giant tree every Christmas. Oh, and anytime a foreign head of state visits, it's customary for the president to greet them. Another thing that's definitely not in the Constitution, but still a part of the president's job these days, is being the de facto leader of a public political party. After all, a sitting or former president often helps raise a lot of money for their political party. They campaign for party members running for lower offices. Also, they almost always nominate people to the federal government who are in the same political party as them. Still, those are the big five, as those are the five things referenced in the Constitution. Keep in mind that the power of the presidency has significantly grown since George Washington was the country's first president, not because the Constitution has changed, but because presidents themselves have expanded their inherent powers. In particular, I'm looking at you, Thomas Jefferson, Andrew Jackson, Abraham Lincoln, Theodore Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, Franklin Roosevelt, Lyndon Johnson, and George W. Bush. That all said, the president doesn't control everything, man. So maybe, I don't know, pay attention to other people running for public office this year? So what did I leave out regarding presidential responsibilities? Also, I am planning a follow-up video to this one about what makes a good president, according to the experts, not my opinion. But hey, I want to hear your opinion. What makes a good president? You know, because y'all are experts too. Let me know down below. Thanks for watching.